Good afternoon, welcome. My name is Karolina Silna. I am the director of the Ecumen Academy and I will be the moderator today. Uh, welcome to the SSE conference, SSE as a response to the crisis. Uh, the conference was uh, supported by uh, Rosa Luxemburg uh, Foundation. Our Ekian Manic Academy runs a long-standing program of School of Alternatives. I am glad that uh, despite the situation that exists in the world, we were able to meet to, with our guests from abroad. Unfortunately, I have to bring the apologies of our Hungarian colleagues who were unable to travel out of their country, but we will hope that we shall meet them in the future and hear what they will have to say. The social solidarity economy is a concept which uh, in regards not only to the to profit, but also it uh, takes other aspects into consideration. What uh, environmental and social uh, part of it all is uh, what matters, and it's a concept that uh, can respond to crises uh, that we face in this world and probably will face in the future. It's a response to the social economic crisis and ecological as well. At the time when we have the big pandemic of COVID, we find out that this crisis is connected to the other ones, uh, the environmental one, and uh, in the wake of uh, pandemics, we sometimes uh, tend to forget about the environmental crisis, and that must be changed. Uh, we must put things into connections. Uh, recently, it has been also discussed uh, that uh, species are disappearing in the nature, and that is connected also to the uh, uh, propagation of uh, the virus. Uh, animals uh, get into closer coexistence with people. So that's all interconnected. Uh, so let's look uh, what SSE can uh, provide as a response. Ecumenical Academy, let me add that, is, uh, has been involved uh, with this uh, concept for a long time. Uh, back in 2017, we ran a conference uh, uh, in the freight train station at Zhishkov, Prague, we brought people together who do not consider profit the only possible consideration. And we try to propose and offer uh, solutions and share examples of good practice, not only from this country, but from other countries too. And uh, SSE and uh, its uh, implementation is uh, also run by RIPES, uh, which is an international network, but it has its uh, uh, European branch. Uh, may I welcome Drajan Chimlasha, who is the coordinator and also represents Creation Green Networks uh, in his country. So let me give the floor to him and uh, let's uh, put on his presentation. Okay. Thank you, Carolina, and uh, uh, I wish uh, like to uh, express my grateful for being here, especially because uh, even for Croatia was till the final uh, starting of my trip was not sure if 
uh, the border will be open. So I'm really glad uh, to be here with all of you. Uh, today I will uh, speak on behalf of uh, RIPES Europe, so our European uh, branch of international intercontinental network. Uh, two years ago I was elected uh, as a general coordinator of the network, so uh, now uh, have much more uh, clear overview of what is happening uh, all over the Europe and also the world and uh, give you some perspective how RIPES as a social and solidarity uh, network is uh, approaching to current uh, challenges. Uh, I will also uh, present a few slides maybe to raise the discussion. Not, I will not go so much deep because of the lack of the time, but I will uh, raise some questions about situation in this Central and uh, Eastern Europe region uh, because it is quite uh, different. It has some of its specifics. Uh, if we are comparing to situation in some other uh, regions or countries in European Union F. If, uh, if you uh, will have uh, more time, I will also present uh, how my organization, Green Network of Activist Group in Croatia, where I am based, uh, also passed through these uh, few months uh, behind us. That was also very challenging for all of us. So, maybe, you can, yes. So RIPES Intercontinental, uh, which is interesting, is much uh, uh, older net network than uh, European, uh, uh, European uh, part. As you can see, uh, RIPES Intercontinental basically uh, was developed uh, on, the, on the rise of first uh, ultra-globalization protest and movement and was very uh, influenced and inspired by uh, movements from uh, so-called third, third world countries or from southern, uh, southern uh, part of our world. And you can go on. And uh, already from beginning, uh, we are considered uh, social and solidarity economy as a part of much lar larger social economy uh, movement, network, but uh, basically we can say that differences is that we are seeking not just uh, in uh, good politics or good economic activities that are, for example, employing marginalized uh, groups, which is good and for to support, but basically we want to go one step further and ask and to find economic activities or public policies or praxis that are through these activities questioning political powers in today's world and uh, wants to create some transformative potentials, want to encourage uh, people that are, uh, you know, in social economic structure down that they can rise through, this, uh, through these activities. For us, this is very important, uh, and uh, basically we are consider everything what social economy or social entrepreneurship usually is doing, like uh, reinvesting uh, uh, the profit, uh, employment of marginalized group, uh, some level of de democracy on working space or in local community, just as a first step not as a, it, this step is needed, but we want to stop there. You can go on. So RIPES Europe is uh, basically the idea also to create European uh, part of the network uh, was, uh, came out uh, on one meeting in Luxembourg and two years later in 2011 in Barcelona, the network was founded so uh, last year, uh, next year we will uh, celebrating 10 years of European network and we are still thinking how to organize uh, this uh, celebration, especially uh, this year we uh, supposed to have our general assembly in Poland, uh, but due to uh, situation with uh, COVID-19, we decided to, to transfer it to online. 
General Assembly, so we will not meet all of our members. At this moment, uh, you can go on. At this moment, RIPES uh, Europe has uh, around 40 members uh, from uh, some uh, almost 20 European countries. And what is uh, different that I want to raise here, that in Western Europe or in countries where social and solidarity economy is really grounded in its history, uh, where there are lots of people uh, participating in the movement, uh, in those countries we have uh, members that are already networks. So they are network of networks and, uh, for example, in Spain, or in France or in Italy, uh, those are already established and long, uh, long experience network that have uh, really a huge uh, membership uh, uh, and they are basically uh, cover all kind of different uh, parts of uh, population, but all kind of different parts of uh, economic activities and uh, social life, let, let's say like that. And for us, we can openly say that they are some kind of inspiration and something that we also want, want to achieve. Uh, so, uh, yes, you can go on. For, so, what is specific for uh, this uh, part of Europe, let's say Central and Eastern Europe, or s even Southeast Europe, uh, is basically that uh, because of our history, we have this uh, issue in many countries with the, uh, you know, labeling, with the uh, uh, background in some countries in so uh, Central and Eastern Europe, for example, or countries that was part of socialist bloc, for example, people from Alba Albania told me that for them uh, the word cooperative is even almost forbidden, you know, it, it looks like you are for some kind of totalitarian uh, way of organizing things. So for in, in some parts of this, in uh, Europe, uh, it is uh, challenging to promote uh, this kind of idea uh, without uh, already putting in some boxes like you are from uh, old history. Uh, this also brings us that in many uh, countries, I don't know for each uh, country in Central and Eastern Europe, we will hear uh, later examples, but basically in, in each country in the 90s after independence, uh, we often felt that we have to start from the beginning, which is a sad thing because, uh, for example, in Croatia, uh, the biggest uh, members uh, of cooperatives was not during... Uh, uh, socialist or communist uh, era after Second World War, but before. So we have lot, much stronger and much more uh, truthful uh, cooperative movement between two world wars with more than uh, 100,000 uh, members and people than after Second World War, but this positive uh, history was lost, was destroyed sometimes on purpose because of, of political elites uh, in, the, in the 90s. So we couldn't uh, continue to work using all this energy, uh, knowledge, infrastructure, uh, you know, what, what, what people in Western Europe didn't have, have this problem and for them it was much, uh, no, much more nature to continue uh, to develop the whole movement. Uh, this also brings us to financial risks, to the problem of um, acceptance, acceptance by political authorities in all these part of the Europe. Uh, and when we compare with uh, some other, for example, in, for example, in Spain or in France, you have already high-level political representatives that are in charge of promoting uh, social and solidarity economy, and this is also one sign on which level uh, uh, the whole sector is developed there and what kind of um, uh, appreciation they are uh, giving to, to the whole uh, idea, to the whole concept. Uh, for us, that is why it is important to, uh, to, to initiate projects like BUSEIS, like that we also uh, gather uh, all here in uh, in Prague and that Ecumenicka Academy is a project leader because through BUSE project we are uh, 
promoting and educating uh, all interesting people about SSC. We will produce uh, educational materials, and this is also one way how this whole idea uh, will be more, more recognized and more, uh, more uh, visible, especially for future, for future generations. <clears throat> you can go on. Uh, I will just uh, stay here very shortly. Uh, this is the uh, current situation in uh, European Union regarding the laws. And you can see from the description on, on laws what kind of chaos is uh, present in European Union. So there is no one coherent approach to the sector, you know, uh, so some countries, uh, European Union, sometimes also promoting uh, social economy, social enterprises, social entrepreneurship, social and solidarity economy, and when you go a little bit deep, you see there are differences. There are many similarities, but there are differences with, between all those approaches. And it also reflects on this map where you can see that basically there is almost no two countries in European Union that have the same uh, uh, name of the law or strategy uh, that they are through which they are promoting or regulate uh, the whole uh, concept. Uh, this is also hard uh, for us that are uh, communicate or cooperate together. Uh, for us it is also challenging uh, because uh, people, you know, are different uh, situation, but we have to deal with it. Uh, we have to deal with this situation. Okay, regarding the crisis, after uh, this uh, uh, crisis uh, occur, we immediately started to communicate with our members all over the world to see in, uh, in what condition they are working, is there, is, there any, uh, is there any need for help to help them. And uh, uh, we started on our web page, we started uh, ripeseu.org, we started to promote responses on COVID-19 uh, with the base on social and solidarity values and approach. So, uh, uh, also that people uh, realize that they are not alone and basically that we just have to in this time uh, focus our energy on local local level and try to help as much people as we can uh, to to not lower our uh, social uh, or human rights uh, you can go on now there are just a few examples like uh, you see uh, during quarantine in Italy was uh, at some point forbidden for uh, community supported agriculture uh, models or groups to deliver uh, food. So they initiate a huge campaign to, to, to release them for that because they need to bring uh, local and fresh organic food to, to the people in need and also to not spoil, to not uh, lost. Uh, this food because of a uh, period of time. So uh, this, for them this was really important because Italy is one of the most developed countries in Europe regarding this, uh, this group. Go on. You can go on. This is also one example from Portugal, how they create uh, like neighborhood watch and uh, helping uh, elderly people, people that couldn't go out uh, through, through the network of social and solidarity economy. So these kind of examples are really a lot. They are all, we uh, gather them all over the Europe. And for us, it was a good sign that even though some organization really suffer a lot because of economic situation, because of uh, stop of uh, political uh, support and changes in priorities, for us, this was a good sign that the movement is alive and even that during the crisis, which is really important, we can show this resilience uh, attitude and can uh, react very fast on urgent uh, needs. Go on. Also, we worked a lot uh, on global level, on uh, 
communication level, with lobbying, and um, very often we are promoting this notion that it is not, that we, if we are calling now this uh, new normality, that we don't want to go back to old normality because under our opinion, uh, so-called old, norm old normal contribute uh, to the brutal uh, effects of, uh, of the virus and our invasion in the nature and uh, thinking that we are separate uh, from our ecosystem basically is uh, uh, the main cause of, of this, uh, not just environmental crisis, but also social, economic, and I would even say political one uh, crisis. So we are trying to um, uh, advocate a lot that we, have, that we have to use this crisis to create something new. Yes, and this is one of the, uh, you can uh, check on our uh, social networks pages, this is one of the la latest uh, activity or project that we are going, Transformative Economies Lab. So we are uh, collecting all good projects or initiatives that are using economy as a transformative tool uh, to map them also and to have them all in one place so that other uh, people can be inspired and to learn uh, something from it. So how, how am I with the time? Five minutes? Okay. Okay, I will just shortly now um, uh, uh, present you a little bit uh, story from, from where I'm coming. We are one uh, permacultural educational center 20 kilometers south from Zagreb. And basically, as an educational center, you can assume that we are uh, basically full with the people. Almost every weekend is some at least 30 people on some kind of education, and during a week, at least uh, two or three schools are coming to our uh, educational center. You can just go on. For us, it was always good to be close to Zagreb, but in completely different environment. Uh, and this also crisis affects us a lot, so we had to stop all of our uh, public uh, projects. Just go on. There are just some pictures that you can uh, see how it looks like. So we are really working a lot on how to practice sustainability, not just how to talk uh, about it. And many people are coming for, for, uh, for real education and uh, skills to our place. So we, some uh, things we uh, transfer also to online world, and we organize uh, lots of education, uh, especially for uh, uh, kids in schools and for uh, activists uh, on, online. But uh, for us it was also important to see this is a traditional uh, village in, in Croatia. For us it was also um, interesting to see how this kind of small community function in this kind of uh, crisis. In Croatia, I don't know what was situation here, but in Croatia at some point was even forbidden to travel uh, between different uh, counties. So you, you could basically be just in your own small area and it was even forbidden to, to travel. Basically for us it was forbidden to travel to Zagreb, even though we have only 20, 20 kilometers and we have only also public transport, but it was forbidden at that time, uh, gone. So, uh, so basically the whole village organized in some, let's say, parallel universe uh, world, we start to help each other, especially to elderly, and uh, we uh, organize educational uh, program for uh, kids uh, in the village. Uh, so, someone from, uh, uh, from grown up person had to take care, uh, care for all kids for two uh, hours in a day and uh, figure it out uh, how to educate them, how to create their, their constructive time. You can go on. But, uh, I, I, and I will finish the, with this. For us, the biggest uh, challenge was, as I said, it was forbidden to travel. And um, I don't know how much you know about it because every country was occupied by its own uh, problems. But on the 22nd of March, uh, a hard earthquake uh, hits Zagreb. And several thousand uh, people 
lost uh, their homes, uh, you know, uh, at the end of it, winter it was still very cold without heating, without uh, uh, in the middle of pandemic. And basically uh, we have, as our friends from, uh, from, uh, from Poland, we also have a community supported agriculture uh, cooperative that is, uh, have two spots in Zagreb for delivering organic food. And for us, it was a problem because, uh, uh, because of different reasons, but all of us that are working on this project was in different counties in Zagreb and, uh, than Zagreb, and we couldn't uh, organize uh, this activity. And then basically, with the help uh, of volunteers that are based in Zagreb, we organized everything through internet. They uh, organize uh, home delivery. Uh, with this food, which was very important because people in the center of Zagreb and east part of Zagreb that was hit mostly by, by the earthquake, they couldn't, uh, you know, all open uh, markets was closed down. In the center of uh, the city, you don't have shopping uh, malls that was uh, open, you know, so for them it was almost impossible to, to provide any kind of food and they call us, why you are not working now? We had two weeks, uh, two weeks break. Why you are not uh, organized now something and then in these two weeks we organize this home delivery. I just wanted to say that home delivery is one of the worst uh, uh, job uh, in my experience. It is so boring, so time consuming, uh, you know. Uh, so basically we were happy when we come back to our these two main spots in different parts of the city uh, and it is much more uh, better in community and social uh, aspects. Uh, so now uh, we are uh, on the way to start up with new project that is reaction on uh, consequences of COVID-19 that is called uh, Potentials of Community. We were selected by National Foundation for Civil Society Organization as the main leader of this uh, whole program. And basically for us, this was also a good, uh, a huge honor for us. Uh, we will uh, educate people from local communities, from cities that are active in their local communities, how to react on this kind of crisis and how to avoid uh, basically destruction of economic and social life with the also base of social and solidarity economy that we gather from RIPES. This, was, this will be our main project in the next uh, year. Thank you for your attention, and I'm here for any of your questions. Tak děkuji Draženovi za jeho prezentaci. A, a já jenom, jestli máte nějaké dotazy. So, thank you very much. Do you have any questions, any comments? Please. Uh, put them down on a piece of paper because uh, I'd rather organize a discussion after we've heard both speakers. Just to add, prior to giving the floor to Zbigniew Fiala, who is a journalist and he is uh, the member of the initiative uh, Bottom uh, Up. He it is an organization which uh, is focused on uh, solidarity, participation, uh, making people active. Uh, uh, he is very much interested in uh, the cooperative uh, uh, philosophy and uh, its support. And uh, in reaction to what Drajan has said, he is from Croatia and his uh, uh, experience is similar to the ours. He spoke about the cooperative movement, which, uh, uh, well, the history uh, is quite uh, uh, similar to the ours. We have a very long tradition of cooperatives, uh, uh, more than 70 years, and uh, now new cooperatives are being uh, founded, established. Uh, there is even uh, a publishing house which uh, uh, was founded as a cooperative. But uh, we are exposed to fierce uh, competition with other types of uh, enterprises, so we have to uh, join our forces to, to withstand the competition. So the floor is yours.
Um, good uh, afternoon. It is my pleasure to use the opportunity and speak on uh, speak uh, about uh, the topic which is my favorite, and I hope that you will enjoy it. It uh, reflects uh, the essential feature of my personality. I am a very optimistic person, and I can really rejoice of many things. There is this uh, joke. The professor that uh, asks his assistant, come and see this wonderful ulcer. So I really t can rejoice over everything. And uh, it seems to me that the pandemic which we are hit by is a kind of a crossroads of uh, several crises. And it is a kind of an accelerator of the development. And whatever restrictions are brought by the crisis, they are just in time because they will help us solve other problems like the climatic crisis and all the pollution that is generated by transport. It seems to me that there is a bit less of the transport now, and hopefully it will drop even further. And then there is the crisis of growing inequalities, which are partly due to the over-expanded uh, uh, global economy. Globalization is uh, an instrument uh, through which things are sucked out from different places and concentrated in one place. So this uh, should be reversed. First, I want to describe the Czech situation. The Czech Republic back in the 90s uh, uh, fell victim to a liberalism, a fanatic liberalism, if you want. Uh, actually, there was an idea that whatever we had so far is worthless, and if we just give it for free to people, it will be fine. So that's what we did. We destroyed uh, thereby our economy, and we became a source of cheap labor for foreign companies, which determine the prices. And as a result of that, we pay out some 300 billion crowns in dividends. And uh, on top of that, there are price inequalities, uh, uh, prices, uh, I'm talking about the goods and about uh, services, which again, take money out of the country. So if we look at the production and if we put side by side a German car and a Czech car, they are quasi equal. Uh, to 80 percent, let's say. But if we look at uh, the um, remuneration for the uh, labor, we are at one third or one fourth, and that's the difference. And as a result of that, we now have a, a layer of uh, super billionaires, multi billionaires, uh, that are over 1,000. So their wealth is estimated at over $30 million. But this is not surprising, because if we compare uh, the European regions, the Czech Republic, sorry, Prague, I'm speaking about Prague, is at the fifth or sixth place, and followed by Bratislava. So it means that uh, the main uh, concentration of whatever that is sucked out of the regions uh, is in Prague and then in Bratislava. There, there is another statistics, namely uh, in Czechia there are about 4% of really poor people or 10% of those who are menaced by poverty. If, however, you look at the median uh, uh, salary, it is still under the threshold of poverty in Germany, and that is about 30 percent of the population. So all this stems from the foreign property, um, uh, foreign ownership of companies, uh, uh, excessive uh, uh, export, globalization, centralization of everything. 
centralization of finance, of industrial production, and the decision making, the, the decision powers. The coronavirus pandemic is a phenomenon which sort of uh, disturbs all this. It shakes all this. It's like a car that slides and uh, results in a shock against a wall. If uh, you look at uh, the distributing chains which are just smashed by the quarantine, uh, the uh, bans on traveling, we heard about the situation in Zagreb, the same was too for the workers. The entire system worked because there was this cheap uh, goods that were coming from Asia, from China mostly. And uh, now with the corona uh, virus barriers or is disrupted. So there is a certain chance that there will be more weight put on the short distance economy. Short distance economy. There will be less personal contacts. That means digitalization, uh, information flows, uh, robotization in material handling. There will be a big, uh, a big number of things that will have to be organized in a different way and uh, better uh, self-providing will be stressed. And that's a great environment for us to create some uh, development visions of local or regional character of what is available and accessible with all those limitations. So people could put more energy into subsidiarity, being uh, producers and uh, consumers at the same time. We would like to see uh, that our uh, expenditure is my neighbor's income and vice versa. And uh, that can start with the local energy, and but not only energy. Instead of uh, this being an expenditure that uh, flows somewhere else, uh, this should become an income that happens locally. All this can be done in a primitive way where you can dig your own potatoes or vegetables, but we can also think of robotization or digitalization that take our jobs away. For example, bookkeeping can now be replaced by a software model. Uh, in the English-speaking community, it's only Indians who uh, communicate instead of the British or Americans. Uh, all these uh, achievements uh, of the new times uh, that uh, destroyed jobs can now be moved to decentralize the economy. I think that progressive vision consists in uh, making use of uh, uh, technologies in combination with participation and involving uh, people in local ideas and visions so that we could do something of the kind. We need a certain environment in which We already have some building blocks. It turns out that the basic uh, entrepreneurship uh, model suitable for this long-term considerations will look at what uh, sources we have around us, uh, what uh, available finance uh, is there, what the potential is. All these are things that cannot only take place on a purely 
competitive uh, economy. It must be rather a cooperating economy. A cooperation is uh, also basis for the word cooperative. So cooperatives should be active, uh, which uh, can also be very solid. This model expects everybody to bring their potential in and keeps people in contact and people are sometimes more, sometimes less successful, but there is uh, uh, some balancing. When we help somebody now, uh, next time he or she will help us. This uh, the, the competitive uh, model of entrepreneurship uh, is only based on quarters. Uh, uh, when shares on it are involved, uh, everybody expects their dividend or they have to pay back banking loans. While the cooperative system can uh, also look into the future, people must come to terms. Uh, the models must be participatory. And you can use techniques uh, that will make it possible. You don't have to meet uh, every day in the local pub. There are uh, local systems of deliberation based on which, uh, on, say, a community web, a room or a space is created uh, on which uh, topics are formulated uh, and then uh, the whole debate can take place. It can be highly sophisticated. About three to four years ago, the European Commission financed uh, a research project in this. Uh, Bernard Blachier and others took part. And for free, they created the local deliberation models and uh, participative uh, deliberation and uh, free of charge, you can take those model and only translate them into Czech. Uh, the basic model was uh, uh, Barcelona, so you will have to translate from Catalonian. So these are the basic uh, conditions that we need. And uh, also there is a savings bank. which uh, pretends to be very friendly to startups. But uh, these are not the most suitable models. Uh, local uh, financial means should be involved. Uh, but it's uh, a matter of uh, coming to terms. Uh, some local currency can be created. You can uh, agree to pay for a uh, work performed uh, in some local form. And uh, there are numbers of numbers of books on this, books rather. And then uh, some advisory or consultation system is needed. Uh, the best thing is to cooperate with local universities. A number of universities have now social economics uh, faculty or social services faculty, and they are able to take up such topics. In uh, Bruno, for example, they have an incubator which runs some um, studies in the Faculty of Economics coordinated with the studies in uh, social science. And the students create some local models uh, Thus, learning how to put the two branches together and create an economy that brings more than only financial success. Some uh, intellectual hubs uh, should be started, maybe, perhaps uh, grants could be announced uh, for research projects. And that's a way to move forward on the European level. Number seven, yes. 
on the European level. Also, conditions are being created. In this country, our rather hostile attitude towards the European Union is quite popular, but it does not necessarily mean that uh, this is the only way it should be. That's politics. Politics is about solving uh, differences in views uh, and uh, coming to some sort of compromise. Uh, so the European Union can offer us something that will be beneficial for us. Uh, the Commission, however, uh, very much right-wing, is uh, enlightened. And they uh, understand that uh, uh, the crisis should be sorted out together. The climatic one, uh, the one cre uh, caused by digitalization, electromobility, robotization, and so on. We must take uh, the factors uh, which are looking f well, looking into the future. In the Czech Republic, uh, however, investment is rather done into things that are obsolete and uh, uh, people try to keep them going. Uh, well, that's caused uh, partly by the billionaires uh, or the poor old millionaires. It's caused by the fact that uh, uh, property some time ago was really given out for, uh, for free. Capital is meant to create uh, uh, success, uh, to create more uh, capital. But uh, if something is given for free, it only serves uh, uh, to purchase a new car or spend a holiday in the Seychelles. Uh, there are a number of uh, elements that are attractive, even if they are now part, are not part of uh, the system. For example, ecologization. You may not know, but you have uh, quite a lot of residues of pesticide in your organism. There is no technology to remove all uh, the uh, harmful uh, substances from water. Uh, we now had a summer that was wetter, wetter but um, um, what will then happen when uh, more wind will be uh, flowing from Sahara. Sometimes it only reaches uh, Spain, but sometimes it uh, reaches up to this place and the water disappears again. And uh, it's not only about solving this uh, climatic crisis. Uh, uh, the first region to be hit was uh, an Austrian region near the Hungarian border, but they made themselves uh, self-subsistent. Nowadays, they are a prosperous region which can produce uh, uh, gas from wood that can be used as a resource of energy. Uh, energy savings in buildings are quite uh, popular. If you put all that into a regional or local vision, the region can then prosper and uh, can provide for itself. The model of usage of uh, newest technology is sometimes um, part of Quarrel. You heard about the five, uh, fifth generation uh, products, software products uh, by the Chinese. And uh, uh, the company um, also 
refused to provide back doors into that uh, into their products by the NSA. There is always some war going on. Things that come up with the digitalization uh, change the economy. We know sharing. Uh, things uh, think that can be used for uh, good or bad reasons. For example, the fire is so. Uh, when a platform called Uber was created, which has contracts with uh, drivers, and they can dictate uh, their own conditions, uh, securing only minimum wage. If you come back to the previous concept, uh, the price of such a mediator goes out and it mm, uh, ceases to be a uh, part of a, a normal economic cycle. And you cannot expect it or you cannot uh, count it into a, a spending system. Also collaboration, collaborative uh, relationship. People enter it uh, expecting to know a platform or a system whereby they can make their living or uh, the profit movement is not there and uh, work is done for free. But uh, work or labor is uh, a good uh, goods. So the classical model of economy stops to work in digitalization to a certain extent. Uh, we only know the phenomenon for 10 or 15 years, uh, but it uh, gets through more and more. It's not only a deviation. Another thing that is extremely interesting, what was <coughs> Capital consuming, it, for example, you needed 100 million to start a project. But here the situation is like uh, with the internet. Uh, oh, for example, if you wanted to uh, watch the TV, you had to maybe steal the signal. But now, so many things are for free. And a number of production systems are now, conce now conceived in a way for you to get all the materials you needed from a digital cooperation somewhere on the network. You can create some uh, digital blueprints for a product. And then uh, you can produce on a computer-run machinery. So the concepts uh, are designed globally, but uh, manufactured locally. We had a representative of that system in the AZ conference. Uh, he was a Greek named Dofernos. He is uh, one of the people who put this to We had a, a Ripas colleague there who also heard it. And that makes it possible. Uh, to make uh, small devices or what used to be a big part of machinery. They can be dispersed and then can, they can be able to cooperate. Every machine or every part of uh, material and uh, every part that is being worked has also uh, an analog, an alter ego and they passed operations from one another, and you can, theoretically speaking, uh, produce uh, anything, anywhere, and at any time. So it again opens up uh, the space to localization. So I'm a big uh, optimist. I'm so optimistic, thinking that uh, now that we must uh, uh, reduced traveling, reduced meeting other people. It is very progressive in a way for to give us the idea of what is within our reach, which is not so much expensive. Only it only needs 
cooperation and agreement. These are uh, things that can be uh, kept in our uh, head. And that's uh, my beautiful, wonderful Alsa that I have here. Thank you. Thank you for your intervention. I certainly agree with you. We should be more optimistic because that would also mean more energy for all the challenges that are ahead and uh, which and uh, more energy for developing the fantasies and utopia uh, utopias perhaps which are necessary and uh, which we have to pursue and uh, we should never say that we will never attain them so this uh, gives me the possibility of introducing to you Eva Riechanska. She is the founder of the Utopia organization uh, from Bratislava. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Well, I come from Bratislava and I've just learned an interesting piece of information about Bratislava. But uh, uh, this doesn't make me one of the uh, richest. But we, uh, we, we actually operate on a different basis, and that is why we are also introduced uh, by some of the uh, utopic ideas. Uh, and uh, if uh, I tell somebody that my organization is called Utopia, some people tend to believe that that's not achievable. Well whatever. Social and solidarious economy, or rather economy of uh, social solidarity, as uh, we call it, is a topic which in the Slovak context is uh, all but ignored. Just a handful of people perhaps know at least something about what this means. We, as an organization, try to promote a little bit the idea to uh, enlighten people about it uh, through various means. And we also try to map the situation in Slovakia. And we match ourselves to uh, the neighboring countries. And I'm bound to say that Slovakia uh, is uh, rather backward, or uh, rather uh, 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 in a slumber. People tend to be reluctant to wake up to the new ideas, to uh, how uh, both economic and social uh, relations could be organized. Certainly, there is the heritage of the previous regime, which, is, which still marks us. And it is also uh, the consequence of those past 30 years, 30 years since the change of the regime, which generate very strong pressures against topics, against narratives, against ideas, which could be labeled perhaps as left or leftist. Uh, I don't like the word primitive. But uh, it is perhaps the best uh, way how to describe uh, what is uh, what we uh, call the primitive anti-communism, which becomes a part of the mainstream. And uh, it is a kind uh, of uh, 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 of a pattern which uh, often people use when evaluating things, but this is not just the problem of Slovakia. It can also be observed in other countries. What is specific about Slovakia is that the counter reaction is, uh, to counter reaction to this is very weak. In other words, people tend to accept uh, uncritically the right-wing narrative, uh, which tells them how the world should, uh, how the world should operate. 
So the topic of solidarious economy is very weak. Along with that, though, two years ago, the first step to open the topic and to bring it to practice, I came along with the law on social economy, which entered in vigor in May uh, 2018. It's a law on uh, social economy and social enterprise. So it puts stress on the entrepreneurial side of it, but it seems to be really the toe in the door, which is still almost closed, but uh, which in the future could open it up to a change of the way we organize uh, or we think about organizing the economic um, relationships. Two years is a short period of time and it took some time before it, it all get, got in movement. Um, what's written in the law is quite interesting and uh, there is a fairly bro broad scope of what is included in it as social economy. However, in practice, when we try to find out who asked to be registered as a social enterprise and who, based on this law, could and it can be all kinds of persons, it can be a civic association or whatever. So any kind of person can ask to be registered as a social uh, enterprise, and there are over 180 of them currently. And uh, we uh, looked uh, at the website, um, which gives the, the list, and uh, most of these, or practically all of them, uh, are focused on the integration of disadvantaged groups. So, if you speak about social enterprise or social economy, there is still the tendency of conceiving it in the traditional way, in the, along the well-trodden paths which means that what is social means helping those who can't afford uh, or can't manage to, to find the job on the labor market or whatever. So disadvantaged people of all sorts, be it uh, disadvantaged in terms of health or ethnic origin or whatever, elderly people and so on. We do have problems, for instance, with the Roma people. So there are so so all these uh, um, social enterprises are focused on this. So once again, uh, uh, there is a very narrow uh, understanding for the notion of social economy. A part of these entities. Uh, uh, was uh, involved in uh, some sort of integration programs even prior to the um, uh, to the law. Now, since they have some practice and they have been operating in a certain way, and they get the registration of being a social uh, enterprise, they get some sort of benefits or support or advantage, and. Uh, there is a holding of investments which provides money for uh, from the state budget. All that is very recent, some 12 or 18 months ago. No, 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 sorry, after, uh, after the, the, the law entered in vigor. So while at the beginning there were only four or five such enterprises which had been active before the law, um, now, uh, so, so, so they made use of the experience. So there are possibilities for uh, these, uh, uh, for these organizations, for these enterprises to get some state uh, assistance.
So this is how the uh, situation looks currently. And uh, the project where we are partner organization a part, uh, partner organization and other projects also, we uh, try to spread the broader uh, understanding for the notion of uh, mm, social economy and uh, solidarity economy. Because the goals uh, which we pursue are much broader and uh, they are slightly different. But once again, people are not used to it. And uh, the thinking goes somewhere else. Uh, obviously, because it is intended at uh, changing or rethinking um, the, the economic uh, uh, relations, social uh, um, relations, and so on, uh, people have to rethink the way uh, they operate with the others, uh, they operate for uh, for earning their living and uh, how they could operate in the real life. So it means different understanding how to participate in the economic relations. It's not just selling your labor or uh, working just in order to get money. There is uh, the, the economic sphere is a network where the relations are much broader uh, than we traditionally tend to think. This really is a long distance run. And uh, what is uh, missing is the uh, curiosity about the inquisitiveness, the, 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 uh, the will to learn more and to to acquire some uh, different knowledge. We are much too narrowly focused on the neoliberal concept of the economy. We did have a government uh, which pretended to be socio-democratic, but it pursued a uh, neoliberal uh, way of uh, organizing economy uh, so and obviously there are technologies but they are not uh, self salutary who is the biggest billionaire in the world well it is those people who own the companies uh, that generate those uh, technologies and uh, uh, what we pay for these uh, companies is the environmental price there are political problems uh, in uh, countries where lithium is uh, mined extracted uh, we are a country of five million people, and I'm afraid that many people in Slovakia are not aware of the uh, of the uh, global intertwining of the world, and many do not understand what the dependencies are. The crisis, which came along with COVID. Uh, triggered a kind of spontaneous mobilization in people. There were various initiatives which were of which were actually the activities of social solidarity. We had the lockdown, although our prime minister called it blackout and people were left to themselves and uh, 
Well, I think that this could be observed in other countries as well. I think that uh, what it did to people was to provoke some spontaneous reaction, meaning like, okay, the, the, the state is failing and uh, we have to help ourselves. And I think that these are the moments when we realize that the need for mutual help, mutual assistance is real and it is very much alive until some sorts of interpretation patterns start to, uh, 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 to, to, to encroach on it. Many times it happens that uh, when we discuss with people about, uh, and we start talking about issues of social solidarity, people start saying, oh, no, no, this was, uh, uh, this is something which doesn't work. He used to have it, we used to have it once and it failed. I think that what we need is the practice. People need to live something different as opposed to what they are used to. I'm not saying the crisis is good, but uh, it showed that people were able to organize spontaneously. They started thinking about what should they do How about that guy who lives next door. He is an old gentleman. Perhaps he needs something. People would stick leaflets on the door proposed the services, there were no masks available and uh, people were bound to wear them, but uh, you couldn't buy them. There was nothing available in, 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 in shops. Even the shop assistants didn't have the masks, not even in pharmacies. So spontaneously uh, using social network, uh, networks and using obviously direct uh, um, uh, contacts, uh, people started uh, uh, making their masks and uh, distributing them. People started talking about what could be used uh, as a disinfectant. And uh, it was actually, it replaced those services which uh, were disrupted, which were dysfunctional. And people could see that uh, they are uh, could see that they were able to organize uh, themselves. They started to be interested in uh, uh, in the homeless people. Uh, they started distributing food. And uh, the mutual aid in this, in the very uh, profound meaning of the word, started to operate, started to function. And people also started to be more interested in their own situation. And I think that from this point of view, it was uh, quite interesting to observe uh, as a social phenomenon. We have a nice example. There was a Roma center. The, it's the Union of Roma Maternity uh, Center in a small um, uh, Slovak town that was very hardly hit by the collapse of the traditional enterprise. There are Roma women with whom we'd been cooperating in many projects. Uh, they wanted to be better educated uh, about uh, um, social economy. They started to spread the ideas. Uh, they uh, collected uh, money, they collected uh, food and distributed it. They were uh, sewing uh, the, uh, the masks and masks for others. So this was a very nice example um, of people who suddenly realized that it is good to help each other. We have another example from Bratislava. On, uh, in the town hall of one of the pra uh, of Bratislava district, uh, uh, a project was launched uh, uh, of solidarity against uh, coronavirus. The initiative came from uh, uh, the office of uh, one of the babies of my organization. It's called Participation. Actually, we were the first. Um, uh, organization which started to spread the idea of participated bu participative budgeting. And uh, the first 
bureau or office for the uh, participation of citizens uh, focused on the participative uh, budget opened in Bratislava. And uh, then the crisis came and uh, thanks to the communication network which had been created by then, uh, gave uh, uh, there was a possibility for people to apply to 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 be involved in the network, and you can get all the information. And currently, there are over three hundred people, uh, volunteers, who are organised, and uh, the. They, they, they use the capacities uh, of the uh, town hall. They, again, start distributing, m making and distributing uh, masks and uh, many other things. A side effect uh, was that uh, distributing centers were closed down and people had to, based on the project, had to help other people who, instead of uh, going to the social distributing point, uh, or uh, will rather consulting a web site. You can look at it yourself. You can uh, tell the organizers whether you can help or you need help. And if you want to help, in what way you uh, plan to do it. And 70% uh, of those people are ready to distribute goods, uh, distribute masks, or provide information to the community. So such initiatives were started. I know of other places in Slovakia where just because of the fact that the state uh, failed to act. Uh, our people started to act themselves. Uh, so let me finish at an optimistic tone. To what extent will that be transformed into a long-term experience and what potential it has for the way people think, uh, thinking of uh, doing things in uh, a different way and not be afraid of those who will be telling you want to bring them back to totalitarian times. Uh, you just can disregard that. And I think that uh, people started uh, to think in, def in a different way, especially those who are socially deprived, uh, who can understand that something's uh, wrong with the system. And when you look uh, at people who look um, at the crisis of uh, global capitalism from the bottom, I am not all that optimistic uh, in a meeting uh, during the Constitution Day on the 1st of uh, September. We had some groups coming to the Parliament uh, who protested against the mask terror. There, was, uh, there were a number of uh, hardcore right-wing groups or parties who uh, in interfered together with the old time communists and even Nazi people. So I am not too much optimistic about this. And it is on this note that I will finish. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you. Okay, and thank you, Elva, for your intervention. Maybe I would like to encourage you to be more optimistic for the future.
we think that it really is education that can show new ways of uh, doing things or looking at the past, showing it uh, in uh, another type of light than it used to be shown. As Denia uh, mentioned that there are more and more places in the universities uh, that are involved in teaching social uh, solidarity economics. It's done more on the basis of informal uh, education. That's why we have our guests today. Based on our projects, we create a teaching group that uh, uh, will be meant to help disseminate this approach, and we believe this is a, an important uh, tool, not only for uh, theoretic consideration, but also for showing a practical experience, uh, showing how to start things uh, so they could then work independently. We, as uh, the Ecumenic uh, Academy, have an experience that we do not only talk of things, but also switch uh, over to practice. We, for example, uh, now celebrate uh, the 10 years of uh, coffee baking business uh, as a free trade initiative. It started uh, thanks to support that was provided for the project. Also during the crisis, it turns out, it turns up, turns out rather, uh, that uh, while well, the crisis can hit various places, uh, I will now give the floor. Maybe we will shift uh, the break a bit uh, because we will only have two speakers in the second part. Uh, can you? Please introduce yourself and please keep to a short type of question. So may I now ask my colleague to pass on the microphone. So are there questions? Oh, yes. Yes, on in education. When you think of the School of Economics of Prague, which I finished, uh, they uh, stopped uh, teaching uh, workers' movement history and also history of uh, uh, economic theories. The only theory is uh, so much against the environmental initiatives. They don't want to hear about it. And uh, it's a bad thing that happens. I didn't really mean that uh, you will only do with uh, education. But inside uh, facing the crisis, also the education is part of it. But also the politi on a political level, a regional, local, or national it is also very much important, very much important. Okay, more questions? Thank you. My name is Libusha Stankova. I'm from the uh, alternative from the bottom um, to our Slovak colleague on the um, social enterprises. Uh, what I'm interested in is the Roma issue. In what type of social projects uh, are Roma people employed? Is there a sort of surveying it? Uh, are, are there any materials available on it? Yes, certainly. It will be interesting for you to look at the Spišski Harho community. It was a pioneering project. 
uh, the local mayor started to work with the Roma people several years ago, and he created a community uh, enterprise, and through the local economy and uh, local relationship, he involved uh, the Roma people into the local uh, economy. And Spisky is one of the small places that people do not abandon, but rather want to move there to that place. I may have a different perspective on how this should uh, work. The, I find this uh, slightly part, uh, paternalistic, but that's uh, my own point of view. But social economy should be participatory. And, but the element of emancipation is there. People can get a job, can make their living, and can uh, function inside the local society and are not pressed out of it and marginalized. A very interesting example is a new, newly started enterprise also involving environmental aspect. It's a company that was started at the initiative of, of the regions so the region Banska Bistrica started it on uh, the social economy dot uh, SK. You can find information, especially on the Poltari community, where they started to work with the Roma women, and they started agricultural and forestry business. They used to have uh, a seed developing. Uh, stationed there, and uh, there is a secondary school also involved. So it's a uh, an interesting experiment. From the point of view of Slovakia, this is something very unique. So these are two specific examples, and you can also look at other things. I believe that out of 180 uh, enterprises, can I then take uh, the uh, address, the mail address from you uh, during the break? Yes, of course. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for the great intervention. My name is Yaroslava Šťastná. I work in the uh, Department of uh, Social. Uh, work in the School of Economics. Can I uh, tell you, make a remark on the, the technological uh, optimism? We found out during the COVID crisis that technologies uh, can have a potential that not only brings people together but also excludes. Some communities are weakened and uh, they fell through even more because they have uh, no capacity or potential to uh, use uh, the technology. What, so what happened, for example, 10,000 children did not uh, uh, join uh, uh, the distant education project at all. If a uh, child does not attend the school, it's considered a big problem. Now, it, this was 10,000 excluded children. And so the exclusion tendency, I'm afraid, will also continue. We should be aware. It's not only about uh, uh, children from very poor families. They can be, there can be disadvantaged people that can also fall through. If I may. Say, of course, the system of education is a centralized one. The central systems are in contact with individuals. My optimism is based on the fact that uh, individuals are rather in con contact with dispersed uh, people who would never come together otherwise. Uh, they can see potentials uh, in buying some gadget or device, so 
here really it's all based on the initiative by the individual. And he or she has uh, uh, the possibility to make use of the technology and the intention is already there. As I was traveling to this place, I saw a one-year-old child uh, playing uh, games on his mobile. And I have a, a grandson who is not one year old, he's 17, but uh, he also plays games on his mobile, and uh, I am afraid he's already addicted. I'm afraid such people are alone, and uh, there may be 30 or 40 percent of those. So we are, uh, can, uh, we are a group of uh, dispersed individuals. My vision is rather based on a community which is decentralized, but people have uh, natural contacts. It's. Uh, more possible in a village than in a city. But uh, I'm preparing a film. I got this initiative uh, that uh, uh, the town of Kladno prepares uh, energy independent parts of the city. So. As I said, it can be a source of both freedom and a lack of it. No mic. The interpreter cannot hear. The interpreter cannot hear. Well, I didn't speak of freedom or lack of freedom. It's a question of economic status. You have a the, the class of the suffering about one million of one million people who aren't able to make use of what freedom could provide for them. They need help. They need assistance, and the assistance must come from nearby place, not from a long distance. One maybe uh, expansion of. Uh, I am very much uh, grateful for the Polchar. Eighteen years ago, I was there communicating with the Roma uh, women. We bought uh, some sewing machines for them, and they started to see. Uh, one Roma woman was from uh, the regional authority. And you must start with the women. Uh, the men are too much macho. But um, women can work uh, in a very honest way. So thank you for Polta. There was a great atmosphere then. They got 12 uh, sewing machines and they were um, excited about it. Now, my question, you said uh, uh, about uh, 180 uh, companies who are rather outsiders, whether uh, the arrival of robotization, will the number of outsiders uh, be extended, uh, the disadvantaged groups? because uh, the 4.0 industry will throw people out. It will not only be some disadvantaged people who are from disadvantaged uh, uh, areas. It will be just normal people who will be marginalized. Do you think that such social enterprises will uh, uh, provide for those that will be thrown out uh, by um, uh, the industry, the big industry. That's a question to you. And uh, one to Zdeniak. These social solidarity companies, will they not uh, develop technology that will be no more state of the art? And people will be satisfied because uh, you do not need uh, 
the latest type of mobile, and you are quite um, well off. Well, a uh, five or seven years old one. Uh, but that technology could be used in a very simple way, so two economies could uh, uh, be in existence. One with the state of the art, uh, gadgets and technologies, and one that you will call maybe outsider in inverted commas, that will only concern the lower middle class uh, creating its own economic and social world. That's all for me. Thank you. It was a terrible question. I cannot look into a crystal ball to uh, give you a, a forecast of what will happen. What is sure, though, that the Slovak economy, more than the Czech economy, is based on uh, the cheap labor. We are the assembly line for the automobile industry. And uh, actually, whatever government uh, was there in my country, they all perpetrated this model. And our <coughs> agriculture is uh, largely devastated. So it is very certain that there will be a class of people who will be lost to, due to uh, the technological progress. And I do not know what will happen, how these people will function, and uh, whether some spontaneous movement will arise from the bottom that will try to put forward the idea of making things locally. Let's go and do that. We all have our our competencies, our capacities, our skills. So let us try to figure out what we could do. This is a question which many people don't care about. There are many young people who just leave the country. This is one of the problems. They go uh, to study abroad and they never come back. So this is a layer of people who will certainly find the career somewhere else. But what will happen next, I don't know. Will people go hungry or will they rob from one another, killing one another? Or will they really start helping each other and trying to, 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 uh, to answer the challenge? The question is how the state will react, because the state, as we could see in, uh, see in the past, the state has rather a tendency to, uh, to, to destroy uh, the local economy. And uh, uh, if there is a know-how offering uh, new solutions, it is always questionable whether this will not be opposed by something that comes from the top, from the state. A police can be sent or whatever. I don't know. You can see what's going on in the US. In the US, they put a ban on the mutual aid uh, organizations. They uh, forbid people to distribute meat. Uh, to distribute meal, meals or food. Uh, they they uh, forbid uh, the activists to distribute food. I don't know. We seem to live in a period where it is difficult to uh, make whatever prediction because the development can just go a completely different way. The situation in Slovakia largely depends uh, from the situation in the neighboring countries and in the EU. For the time being, we see a lot of a shift towards the right-wing ideologies, the right-wing uh, uh, narrative, and people who label themselves as liberals. They, too, uh, get more and more shifted towards the fascist uh, sort of uh, ideology. I think that Slovakia will, uh, but maybe thanks to Utopia, Slovakia will become a, a pioneer in the social uh, economy in 10 years. I will try to react to both questions. The first being whether people who just uh, flop 
will be marginals. I don't think so because marginals still have a chance. Robotization in some of the industries will still necessitate that uh, somebody just puts things in a box or whatever. Who will lose the jobs uh, will be some of uh, uh, the clerical uh, jobs uh, uh, like insurance, like uh, banking and so on. And uh, uh, there will be the artificial intelligence because these are repetitive tasks uh, which will be easy for AI. But uh, uh, the economy will be built uh, on uh, in, in a, in a space which is not a desert, intellectual desert. So there are still things which uh, help people. Uh, uh, for instance, the saving banks, the, the mutual saving banks, uh, uh, if people agreed among themselves, one of them could have robbed the others, but this may be avoided. There are also competencies which we no longer have. Before, our forefathers knew a lot of things uh, from the nature in the agriculture. They knew everything about when to harvest, or when to plow, and uh, uh, similar things. We do not know it, but we know other things, and there are new things to acquire. So all we need is competencies, and we need to define them well. We need that someone, someone tell us, tells us what competencies are necessary. But I think that as time goes by, uh, new competencies will develop, will develop. There will be um, consultancies which will be given free, and there will be lifelong learning. I think that obviously there will be designers, there will be uh, IT uh, nerds who will uh, earn their life uh, very well. There will be others who will sweep uh, the uh, streets, but life will make them do something. The two economies, economies, one of which will be the highly sophisticated, robotized, uh, that is, that's the way uh, the Skoda works uh, operate. And it will always be like that if there is a massive production of uh, some cars, obviously Nobody will think about uh, making his own car in his backyard. And who knows, maybe in the future software will be distributed free of charge, or hackers will make sure it will happen. But there will be those disruptive innovations, uh, which are based on the fact that uh, it is not the best of the kind. If something is best of the kind, it is not good because uh, there must always be a price that will cover the costs and that restricts uh, the uh, number of, uh, of um, customers. The best car, which is the best of the best, is so expensive, so expensive that nobody can afford it except for a handful of people. But there are things which are l not quite the best but they are affordable for many other. So even if you have some technology which just simply suffices for the needs which we currently have, but which is cheaper, it will be used. Then we also have the sales or te technology that is discounted or that is even given for free. It can also be used and that can be also used for the do-it-for-yourself, do-it-yourself uh, uh, kind of activities. Even an old computer can compute or is useful for certain things. It can't be used for some things, but it can be used for other things. I know that the cashiers in the supermarkets uh, still work with technology which is sufficient for counting uh, the number of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, rolls they buy. OK, so two more questions. Yiri Silni, uh, Rosa Luxemburg Foundation. Mine is rather a remark than a question. In our deliberations, we failed to put enough stress on or, or focus on limits which start to exist 
as uh, uh, due, uh, owing to the natural uh, conditions, owing to the lack of raw materials and so on. For instance, electromobility, uh, should it be used in the scope in which the fossil fuels are used, it, there will never be enough electricity. The other thing is that to our, in, in our strategy, we always have to be on two levels. We are mostly focused on the support of what is local. It is quite understandable. We know that it can work given certain conditions. But there is all, there's always the environment, what is around all this. So the environment uh, should be created in such a way as to provide the unconditional basic uh, income. Uh, the, on the 25th 5th of uh, October, a new initiative uh, will be launched across Europe. Uh, a million of signatures uh, will be uh, will be collected uh, to oblige the EU to introduce uh, the uh, unconditional uh, basic revenue. It is largely discussed now in the context uh, of the pandemic. Obviously, the devil is always in detail, so it will depend upon the modalities. But there is something that gives the chance. Uh, to freedom, it could help people who are excluded, uh, who, who are the losers and who could be elevated to a certain level as to start something more, uh, more meaningful. And uh, it could also give uh, people uh, the, 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 the strength to do something, um, something more sophisticated. We'll come to the second part of this conference. Uh, before starting with the next presentation and before I pass the floor, I just like to say, uh, in the previous part, I spoke um, about our colleagues from Hungary who were not able to come. Uh, they were colleagues from uh, the Profilanthrop organization that is also active, uh, especially in those excluded uh, uh, localities, uh, Roma uh, villages, uh, and uh, there they helped the local people to start a business. They grow flax and uh, they press oil from the seeds. And uh, along with that, they also uh, breed and raise uh, uh, ostriches uh, for meat. And uh, it's just prospering. So this is just to complete the picture. So now the floor goes to Asha and Wojtek. They will speak about uh, the Warsaw uh, Food Cooperative called Dobze. They have some previous history. They will speak about it, but there are also some new things they will uh, tell us about. And I'm here with Wojtek. We are bo both from cooperative uh, Dobrze. We are a food cooperative from Warsaw. And uh, we will speak a bit of uh, situation of current situation of social solidarity economy in Poland, but it will be a very short one, and then we uh, will speak about our own cooperative and good practices um, that we use in generally in a COVID situation. Um, so I'm very grateful that Eva spoke about the situation of uh, social solidarity economy uh, in Slovakia, because I think that it's very similar to Poland. Um, because we don't understand very well, like in our society we don't understand very well what social solidarity economy means and we also um, somehow co um, connect it with the help, um, social help to the people who are uh, homeless or disabled and this is a very big issue if we want to spread the information about social solidarity economy in Poland. Um, 
we also don't have a inter like social enterprise law. We don't. We cannot register as a social enterprise in Poland. Uh, mostly, social economy um, enterprises work as a normal enterprise, or uh, as we do as an association, foundations, or um, NGOs. So. In fact, even if we see the numbers, um, the um, entities of social solidarity economy in Poland, they are quite high because we can speak about 94,000 entities, but mostly there are NGOs, foundations, and uh, associa associations that are not using the rules of social solidarity economy. So we don't, uh, we cannot speak about uh, like membership, voluntary membership. They are both mostly uh, workers who don't uh, have, um, like, they don't vote of how the entity will develop, and it's a totally different um, entity than uh, what we uh, understand as social uh, social so ah, social solidarity economy. Sorry. So even the numbers are big ones, we cannot speak about uh, popularity of these entities in Poland. And about the COVID, um, as we don't have uh, this registra registration of uh, social solidarity economy enterprises in Poland, it's very hard to see what is the impact of COVID on those. Uh, however, we have the small, not very formal register uh, of these entities, and they made a small, um, small poll. How do this work in the COVID situation? And as you can see, the COVID was very hard for social solidarity economy in Poland because enterprises and uh, cooperatives are very affected, and uh, mostly uh, what uh, was offered them was the official state support. Um, the same level as the normal entities and uh, normal enterprises. And um, to be honest, the mo what worked the best was the self-organized support, like they organized some crowdfunding on the internet, they, product, they changed the products, like uh, they offered t-shirts so that their clients could support them and also the future voter, voters uh, sellings, uh, because normally the um, social solidarity economies enterprises are gastronomy. So in order to uh, be able to work, they just sell the voters for the future. Um, and this was what uh, worked the best, not the official state support, but uh, self-organized support. Uh, it was a very small um, introduction to the uh, situation of SSE in Poland, because we are not the um, research institution, we are practitioners of SSE, and I will now give the microphone to Wojtek so he can introduce, introduce our cooperative. Uh, thank you. Um, a few words of introduction. Our uh, cooperative uh, uh, just recently celebrated uh, the seventh uh, birthday. Uh, in uh, um, and uh, we are uh, we are at the moment uh, I think about 600 uh, more bit, bit, uh, yes more than 500 uh, members um, uh, uh, belong to the uh, cooperative and uh, there are uh, not not accounted for uh, numbers of clients, the outside clients of the cooperative, because our cooperative, uh, uh, which is formally an association, is, uh, um, is the owner of uh, two shops in, uh, in central Warsaw. So we run uh, two grocery shops, uh, and, uh, which, uh, which are uh, run by the association and which employs uh, 14 uh, people at the moment with, uh, with uh, uh, work, uh, proper work contracts, uh, with holidays and, uh, uh, and everything. Mm. So these 14 people are coordinators and they uh, run the shop and they uh, um, 
um, also deal with the contacts with the producers. And this is the, the main thing that distinguishes the cooperative from a, from a, a regular grocery shop is the fact that, uh, first of all, we, we do all the logistics of uh, contacting uh, different uh, producers directly. Uh, so we have uh, uh, um, almost 150, um, um, how do you say, Dostave? deliveries, 150 deliveries per week to the cooperative. We have more than 100 contacts uh, to different uh, producers and, uh, and entities, so it's a really huge logistic operation to, uh, to deal with this uh, direct, uh, with this short consumer chain. We're really doing a, a lot of work for that. Um, for, for more exotic things like rice and so on, we, we work with uh, organic uh, uh, wholesale uh, businesses uh, to order those. Uh, and then on the other hand, the second thing that distinguishes us from, uh, uh, um, from uh, regular businesses is that a lot of work is done by the members of the cooperative. So there is, uh, there is uh, um, obligatory three hour work for per month. Every person has to work three hours every month uh, in order to, to be part of the cooperative. And uh, um, th uh, thanks to this, we have uh, a lot of help in running the shops and doing all sorts of things related to community, uh, to building the community, to uh, doing uh, outside events, and to also to running the shops, transport, cleaning, and so on and so on. Uh, so this is this, these two uh, factors distinguish our uh, our business, but the shops are open to uh, outside clients. So the the difference is that uh, that uh, members get a lower price. So uh, we don't pay the margin that outside clients uh, pay, and of course they are not. Uh, they, if you are not member of the co uh, cooperative, you are not. Uh, part of the community, which is a really important factor for for uh, for a lot of uh, people who sign up to the cooperative, not only access to the healthy food, uh, but also being part of a community that is uh, creating an alternative uh, business uh, and economy model. So this is a short introduction. Um, yeah, these are the uh, the six uh, general areas of work of, uh, of our uh, cooperative because we not only provide the, the healthy food and uh, um, uh, good alternative uh, to supermarkets, but we also want to uh, build a community. Uh, uh, we work in a democratic way. We, uh, uh, we uh, work directly with farmers, so we, we also try to uh, represent the farmers when, uh, whenever we have an uh, occasion to speak on their behalf, to, uh, to fight for the, um, uh, for the rights of the farmers or for better conditions for them. So we also went to the parliament to, to, uh, on some occasions to lobby for some changes in the law when there was such an occasion, and uh, we go to protests. Uh, 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 that uh, on behalf of the, on, of the, uh, of the, especially the small local and organic farmers, and uh, yeah, and there's uh, important part is also education. So uh, uh, we do workshops. We take part in um, international networks and projects, and uh, and we do events uh, to um, outside of the cooperative, so that. Uh, Mm, as many people as possible learn about uh, our model of functioning and uh, and systemic alternatives. Mm, and uh, the, here is a more or less random list of uh, of uh, uh, good practices that uh, that we could think of uh, uh, that we do in the in the cooperative. And uh, so it's. Um, 
I will read shortly celebration, outside events and workshops, access uh, to non-members, so this is important, this is not a closed uh, cooperative, but, uh, but uh, the food and, the, and many of the events and so on is, uh, are uh, open to, uh, to non-members, so this is an important uh, part. Uh, facilitations of our internal processes. This is, this is, uh, this is an important uh, uh, aspect in the running of uh, cooperatives. So we, uh, we have a democratic structure. We, have, uh, um, we, have, we try to be uh, structured but uh, have uh, horizontal decision-making uh, processes, but this needs uh, very good facilitation and very good uh, managing of the process so that it is, after all, efficient. Because, if, because we are running a business and we have uh, uh, 14 people employed and we have two shops open six uh, days a week and, uh, uh, and we have uh, uh, two million uh, Polish zloty, 500, about 500,000 euros annual turnover so it's a so it's a, it's a business also a social business that needs uh, to function very well so so we need uh, facilitation of all sorts of uh, internal processes we do farm visits uh, this weekend we will have two uh, so so that we know our producers directly this is very important to establish trust, so we not only rely on uh, uh, organic labels, but, uh, but we also uh, cooperate with farmers who don't have the certificate, but we know, what, uh, we know them, we know the practices they, um, uh, they do, and uh, we trust them. That, uh, that they farm in accord in accordance to our values, and uh, there is also institutional and international cooperation. We are part of uh, uh, international projects and networks. We we receive help from uh, from organizations that whenever we can uh, we write application for applications for grants. We go to workshops to to um, to get uh, our skills. To, to better our skills, uh, to get more uh, uh, knowledge about uh, management and, uh, and uh, group work and so on. Uh, and uh, finally, the member volunteering and engagement. This is, this is part of the community uh, building uh, uh, area of the, of the cooperative. Uh, uh, there is always a lot of uh, uh, a large field uh, open to member engagement, and a lot of uh, a lot of initiatives are happening thanks to members of the cooperative uh, taking the initiative and uh, and uh, doing things. And there is like when you have more than 500 people, you can imagine that there are so many different. Uh, so many different, you have access to so many different skills and knowledge and, uh, and uh, interests and so on. And uh, also we are here because we, we, we wanted to be part of, uh, um, of, uh, of a process that goes beyond just uh, our local um, food delivery. So, well. So meanwhile, not to lose uh, time, I will tell you about uh, uh, what happened to the... Because ba basically the content is the same, but uh, we added a lot of photos. So you get the, you get the photos at the end of the uh, presentation. And I also wanted to say about uh, uh, what happened during, uh, during the COVID crisis in the cooperative, because that was... Uh, that was actually quite, uh, quite interesting and special, and it showed the strength and the resilience of the, uh, of the cooperative. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, during, uh, what, just at the beginning of the uh, COVID crisis, um, th there was a huge surge in, uh, in, uh, um, in sales in the cooperative like 
all the members and clients started storming the cooperative and uh, and stocking up on uh, on uh, healthy food <laughs> for the for the lockdown and uh, uh, and there were huge queues and uh, huge amount of uh, work to be done at the same time when the lockdown uh, began uh, we could not uh, continue with our practice of uh, of member involvement in the work because obviously you could not have 500 people uh, working like every day in uh, in uh, many shifts in two shops uh, 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 every day with that would we it would be impossible to comply with uh, with any uh, safety restrictions so what happened actually uh, we hired more people during uh, during the covid crisis so so there was more uh, more uh, employed people uh, there were teams organized uh, that didn't mix with each other. There were like fixed teams that worked together. Uh, people were not entering the shop. Uh, the, the, the sales, the counter was at the door. So people were queuing outside. There were special, uh, special hours. Uh, for uh, elderly and uh, uh, people f uh, from the risk group that uh, so other uh, members were asked not to shop during that uh, during that time and also here you can see some at different stages of the of the uh, uh, of the crisis there were different solutions uh, mm, uh, experimented with also for several weeks we have we had an online shop functioning so it was like uh, set up in super express mode and uh, you could uh, you could uh, order online and then packages were prepared and then you came to the shop to pick up your package and pay um, uh, at the shop so so uh, this really showed how the how the team of uh, um, of coordinators managed to do everything to to accommodate super quickly to the uh, to the situation which was also changing from week to week there were drastic changes to to what uh, could or could not be done uh, but throughout the whole time we uh, maintained contact with uh, all the producers and we uh, we had uh, very high sales, uh, limited only by the queues. So there is a limited amount of goods that can be sold when you have a uh, when you have this limited system of uh, of, uh, of distribution. But that was the only limit. Like uh, actually, dur during crisis uh, uh, time, uh, the interest in uh, in a safe uh, local food was uh, was still very high and uh, and people definitely preferred to to go to their community shop rather than than to go to the supermarket uh, even if it was closer to to their home so so this really showed that uh, that uh, during the the crisis time the the community was uh, was uh, strong and it was uh, very important for the community members to uh, to stick together and there were a lot of uh, also like instead of doing work for the cooperative like in the shop people were sewing masks or uh, or doing other like uh, making uh, transport uh, work or doing other things that that could be done to to help the cooperative and if somebody was uh, was uh, full time on lockdown and couldn't do anything uh, they could uh, they could just instead of doing the the work they could just pay a little extra money for for the cooperative and all this uh, 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 all this uh, resulted in the cooperative do, doing really well uh, uh, throughout the, the whole crisis and even there have been uh, some uh, uh, some uh, super positive outcomes like uh, we managed to to get a very good place for a third shop uh, we, uh, and this is the this is the place so uh, on the next photo you will see like we get the whole ground floor of this 
which will be, it's like 200 square meters, uh, and it will be a shop, a cafe, and a social center. And we have the, we got the support of the local community. Uh, yeah, it's, it's super well localized, and, uh, and uh, it will be a community center, and it's all done in accordance with the local neighbors who were fighting for this uh, space to, to become like a valuable uh, place. Uh, and, uh, and we are cooperating uh, with them to make this like a really powerful uh, uh, social center. So, so the un outcome of the crisis is, <laughs> is actually quite, <laughs> for, for us it's really good. The, uh, uh, the only maybe uh, uh, thing uh, is that uh, the working team was uh, super heavily overworked and, uh, and uh, at some point uh, it was decided that uh, the shop will be closed for one week. All the, the shops are closed and the whole team went for, uh, for vacations. That's the only time in the history of, uh, of the cooperative that this happened. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was really necessary after a few months of this super intense uh, uh, work. And uh, the other few photos, is there anything I should... Uh, yeah, these are illustrations to the things uh, that I mentioned here. That was a farmer, this is a farmer presenting uh, uh, his, uh, his products and the way he's farming with uh, effective microorganisms in front of the shop. Then the next uh, photo is, uh, is a visit uh, at, uh, at uh, the farms, one of the farms, so we are helping to weed and, uh, and we're learning about how the food is grown. Uh, this is this is a general assembly, uh, which is usually attended by 10% of uh, of uh, members, which still makes 50 people, which is quite uh, quite a lot, and have to be uh, heavily facilitated in order to have a meaningful discussion and some decisions that have to be taken within a few hours. So it's not not easy. We are part of uh, uh, networks. This is the food sovereignty uh, movement that the, uh, the that our cooperative is uh, uh, part of. And this is the celebration part. This is uh, this is uh, last year's. This is the sixth uh, uh, birthday of the cooperative. So every year we have a cake. We have. Uh, a whole day event with concerts, workshops, and uh, and so on, and uh, a lot of people from outside also come and uh, and join. And this is a way for them also to learn about the cooperative. And uh, and these are photos of the vitrines of the of the shop, uh, which is also important part and is one of the things that uh, I would mention as a good practice is to to communicate well what the cooperative is about and uh, uh, and uh, so that even people who don't know it when they walk by they they realize that this is something special it was not fr not uh, like this from the start it took us uh, we had to take part in some uh, international workshops uh, to realize that <laughs> that our shops don't look uh, uh, special and people who walk by they have no idea what is what is going on there so 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 it was a long process to learn all these things is there anything else no and the birds were added just for visual pleasure <laughs> So thank you very much. We also, within the framework of the project, we had, uh, I had the opportunity to see the second uh, shop, and I'm looking forward to seeing the third one when I'm next in Warsaw. But last January we were in Warsaw, and we visited a shop, we had a regional meeting, and we took part in uh, the uh, um, 
Food Sovereignty Forum, and we saw the possibility of networking, which is so important. I will now give the floor to Markus, who came from Austria, from Vienna, and he will tell us about the Austrian view of uh, SSE. So it's another neighboring country, and he will also provide us with some good examples from the Austrian perspective. There is always something you can learn from your neighbors. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm really impressed about the third shop, since I, I was also visiting uh, uh, Dobsche in Warsaw, and uh, I'm really happy uh, to hear this good news. Uh, yeah, my presentation uh, is titled A Glimpse at Social Solidarity Economy from an Austrian Perspective. So, first of all, I'd like to give you a little overview on social solidarity economy in Austria. Then I would like to draw your attention to one good uh, example to illustrate uh, something. And then I would like to con conclude uh, with the uh, present situation and uh, with a little outlook. Um, during the last 10 to 15 years in Austria, many new uh, social and solidarity initiatives and enterprises uh, in various fields started. At the same time, major uh, self-organized congresses on uh, SSE took place uh, in the years 2009 and 2013. Um, so, for example, uh, social solidarity uh, initiatives and, and enterprises were founded in the field of food and agriculture. Let, you, let me give you a few uh, examples. First of all, food co-ops. Uh, it's the same name as uh, Adopsche uh, is using for uh, their uh, cooperative and, um, and uh, for their uh, social solidarity enterprise. Uh, the meaning of food co-ops in Austria is a little bit different. Uh, food corps in Austria are small associations of persons with 60 to 80 members each. They are self-organized and they do not have employees. The aim is just like uh, Dobsche to foster direct relationships uh, between consumers and producers. And uh, what the members are doing is uh, to jointly purchase food from mostly local and regional producers, most of them organic. Uh, then uh, several CSAs, uh, community supported agriculture uh, enterprises or yeah, associations, uh, were founded in the last 10 years. Uh, the basic idea of a CSA is uh, that consumers and producers share the, the harvest, which includes sharing the risks related to doing agriculture. Uh, it works like that. A certain number of persons provide for the financing uh, of the producers uh, and they guarantee to pay a certain amount of money for one year. Likewise, the producers guarantee to provide good food. Um, so one could say the idea is not to buy or not to purchase, but to contribute financially uh, to doing agriculture. Uh, sometimes not only financially, but also by working. Uh, in this context, um, I would also like to mention land foundations. In order to secure the land for CSAs, but not only for CSAs, but also for uh, other organic farmers, uh, in Austria recently a foundation was founded, yeah, uh, which was last year, 
and this foundation owns the land, and is, this land is provided to the, to the CSAs and to the farms to do agriculture. Uh, concerning uh, social solidarity economy and COVID-19, uh, for me it is difficult to give a general answer, general answers, but regarding, for example, food corps and CSAs, uh, one can say that basically they were able to continue the work du during the lockdown. Food corps, just like other stores, CSAs, just like other farms. Uh, due to, uh, for, for example, to, to illustrate this, uh, there's a CSA in Vienna uh, and there's a spot uh, at the marketplace, uh, which is an open marketplace, uh, where the vegetables are being distributed. And in Austria, it was the case that those open marketplaces were not closed down uh, during the lockdown. So it was still possible uh, to deliver uh, the vegetables during the lockdown situation. Uh, due to the programs by the government, which uh, have aimed at securing income of, uh, the income of households, until now, it looks like there is no problem income-wise concerning the consumers, those uh, who contribute to CSAs or those who jointly purchase food uh, in food corps. Uh, so far, uh, during the lockdown, uh, in the population, awareness arose that local and regional production uh, of uh, agricultural products uh, is important. So at least from one CSA I've heard that there was more interest uh, uh, from people to become a member or to become members of the CSA than was in the time before. Then please let me uh, mention participatory supermarkets. Uh, that's the name for stores like Dobsche uh, that we use in Austria. We uh, do not have such uh, supermarkets yet, but there are at least two initiatives uh, aiming at founding uh, participatory supermarkets in Austria. And the participatory and cooperative supermarket La Louvre in Paris is a blueprint for one of those initiatives, for one of those groups. And right now, uh, they are inviting persons to be part of the process of setting up uh, this supermarket, which is called Mila, Mitmach Supermarket, which, makes, which means participatory uh, supermarket. Uh, let's now move to another area of social solidarity economy. Let's move to cooperatives in Austria. During the recent years, there was growing interest in founding new cooperatives or turning existing businesses into cooperatives. This is the case in various uh, fields of economy. Just to give you some examples. Freelancing and sole trader businesses. Cooperatives are an interesting alternative to freelancing and to sole trader businesses since they give individuals the opportunity to be employed and to have social security. Besides this, uh, the members can share common infrastructures such as secretary or bookkeeping and so forth. Producer cooperatives. There are new cooperatives in the area of production. To give you a few examples, the production of beverages, foodstuff, sustainable construction, or fair trade garments. In the area of services, there are examples in the fields of editing, graphic design, catering, software development, sustainable blockchain tech solutions, job creation for disabled persons, uh, an alternative news agency was founded, community development, and so forth. There's also the field of multi-stakeholder cooperatives. For example, in the field of gastronomy, 
in rural areas, in many cases, there are no more pubs or cafes. So there uh, are multi-stakeholder cooperatives that run uh, cafes or, or pubs in the rural area. Another example is a grocery store in a small rural community uh, where there are no more retail shops left. Uh, another example in the field of uh, uh, multi-stakeholder cooperatives uh, is uh, a cooperative uh, in the field of regional and organic milk production and distribution. And what is also important to mention in terms of cooperatives, uh, there is a new confederation of cooperatives in Austria. In Austria, every cooperation has to be member of one uh, confederation of cooperatives. Uh, one important job uh, of uh, those confederations is the financial and economic auditing of the cooperatives. A few years ago, a new confederation named Rückenwind was founded. So now we have, I think, five confederations in Austria, five confederations of co-ops now. Uh, let's move to another important uh, field of uh, social solidarity economy, uh, which is housing. New SSC initiatives were also founded in the area of housing in the recent years, both in urban but also in rural areas. Many times these projects do not aim at providing inexpensive housing. Uh, they aim at different needs, which are housing, but also other needs. Uh, so we are talking about persons who want to form intentional groups, or at least uh, want to form groups where the members are not only interested in the private apartment they have, but in communal facilities, in common activities, or in mutual aid, in a community. like. Uh, Usually the, those projects are self-organized. Uh, I will show you one example in the field of housing later uh, and go into more detail. Uh, it's, uh, the, the thing is called Habitat and I'll talk about it later. Then. Um, the, this should only give you a, a small insight. I cannot really cover the whole area, which is clear in those uh, few minutes. Uh, I just want to mention uh, uh, the topic of financing. Uh, this is something I would not like to, to miss out. Um, because there have been new in instruments being developed in the last years, uh, the classical way of, of financing, or a one classical way of financing uh, are contributions by the members to the cooperative uh, in the last years, also crowdfunding campaigns, but there are also other instruments. Uh, for example, uh, direct credits, and I will show you this uh, uh, later when I'm talking about Habitat. Uh, or, for example, Vermögenspool, which is a similar instrument like direct credits. Uh, and Vermögenspool simply means pooling financial means that various people uh, surrounding the community or surrounding the project have. Uh, incubation and education. Uh, there have been some new initiatives uh, in this area, incubation, education, and also let me add research uh, on social solidarity economy. Uh, there have been congresses on the future of corporations in the last years, which led to the foundation of uh, this new uh, association of corporations uh, called Rückenwind. Uh, concerning my institution, the Catholic Social Academy, uh, we have been providing, offering uh, 
uh, causes on social solidarity economy uh, with the aim to help individuals and groups uh, to build up social and solidarity uh, initiatives and enterprises. And at the Catholic Social Academy, we have also done research uh, on uh, issues of uh, social solidarity economy during two years, uh, and uh, we had two research fellows uh, who worked on that. Um, so, um, although uh, those activities are mainly taking place uh, outside the universities, um, I would also like to mention that there are act some activities uh, at universities in Austria. Um, there are a few departments doing research and teaching on democratic enterprises and on social solidarity economy. Um, and um, universities have been um, organizing congresses on good life for all, or this year on uh, degrowth. Um, and yeah, we were organizing with them a couple of workshops on degrowth and social solidarity economy. And uh, at the University of Business Administration and uh, Economics in Vienna, uh, they published a manual on how to run uh, social solidarity enterprises, which was also a very important contribution. And uh, then, please let me know a recent uh, initiative, which is very important for social solidarity economy. It's called uh, City of Collaboration. Uh, it, this is an in initiative financed by the city of Graz uh, in the federal state of Styria. Uh, they run a very interesting website with uh, all kinds of information, videos, interviews, uh, texts, uh, and yeah, uh, they are organizing an action day on the 11th of September uh, on uh, cooperatives and also a very interesting uh, output is an uh, exhibition uh, on social solidarity economy, which will be presented for the first time also on uh, September 11th. The online version can already be found on the website of uh, City of Collaboration. So now please uh, let me um, show you one concrete example, which is Habitat. What is Habitat? Habitat is an uh, umbrella organization of self-organized house projects. Uh, and the aim is uh, at buying out, one could say, real estate from the real estate uh, market. The blueprint for Habitat was the Mietshäuser Syndikat in Germany uh, that already includes more than 150 house projects now. Um, yeah, and the idea is that real estate should not be a speculative good, uh, but rather should serve the needs of the persons living in their homes. Uh, so housing should not be a for-profit venture for individual or companies. So Habitat, as well as Mietshäuser Syndicat, provide structures that guarantee that the houses where the people live in cannot be sold on the open market under any circumstances whatsoever, except one case, uh, if all inhabitants of all the houses, of all the house projects would agree to do so. These self-organized house projects are based on the solidarity principles People within a house project support one another, plus house projects that already exist, that are older, uh, support new projects. Each group of individuals in, the house, uh, in, in each house project finds its own way of making democratic decisions together, though there's not only one way. Um, yeah, and one very important thing to say is no person in one of those house projects owns private property. We're not talking about 
private property. Uh, the idea is to, um, to respect everyone's need for housing. Uh, and that also means uh, that when you want to live in a house project like this, it does not depend on any financial contributions when you move in. This is, in, uh, is different from uh, usual uh, housing cooperatives where you also have to contribute uh, financially. But how does this alternative funding work? <laughs> Some of the users of the real estate um, may have their private funds and they can contribute them. Uh, these funds plus so-called direct credits from other persons from outside the project are the basis for financing the property. And then usually there is uh, funding by an uh, usually alternative bank. bank. And those direct credits uh, have to be paid back. Yeah? But the thing is, if you move in, you do not have to bring this money. It is a community surrounding the house project that provides uh, for a great part uh, of, of the funding uh, via direct credits. So um, sometimes new di direct creditors are needed uh, since it can be the case that people want their money back, or they need the money. Um, however, and this happens, however, it is not possible to withdraw a major amount uh, of these credits at the same time, because uh, the main thing is the house project itself may not be endangered. So it, there is the possibility uh, to get back uh, your direct credit uh, whenever you need it, but if there are too many people, uh, the priority uh, lies uh, in the house project. It should not be endangered. Yeah, so there are a couple of uh, such house projects already uh, existing uh, in uh, various cities uh, in Austria. I do not go any uh, into, into detail any further. Uh, and then there are a couple of new initiatives um, to found such uh, house projects. So let me conclude now. Uh, what we can see is there are various uh, social solidarity uh, initiatives um, in Austria trying to find uh, solutions to the multiple crisis, not only to COVID, but to the social and ecological crisis we are facing. At the same time, uh, there is growing interest in social solidarity economy. Uh, please let me stress that uh, social solidarity is not such a big part uh, uh, of the economy. Uh, and, uh, but at the same time, we can say that there's growing interest, for example, in the media. Uh, very interesting, be it on corporate be it on food co-ops, uh, there's quite some interest. But also in civil society. Uh, let me give you one example. Uh, the CSA, for example, were invited to contribute to the so-called Forum Alpbach, uh, which is very known as a yeah, forum on future topics and which is, uh, yeah, uh, I would say not so progressive, rather a conservative place to discuss uh, <clears throat> issues. So yeah, there is in, uh, some interest uh, in the civil society. Uh, then I think there are some open windows uh, in politics. When you look at uh, the uh, coalition government's treaty, we have a coalition a government of cons the conservatives uh, and the Greens, uh, the Green Party. And when you read this treaty, you will, will find some references to the social solidarity economy, be it the circular economy and reuse, uh, the energy, local energy uh, production, sustainable 
uh, energy production by citizens, uh, namely also CSAs uh, and, and food co-ops. Um, and uh, cooperatives are explicitly uh, named in this uh, treaty. Um, the coalition uh, government's treaty says cooperatives uh, are important because they are sustainable and because they are resilient. Uh, this does not automatically mean that there are concrete strategies and action plans. Uh, at least I have not noticed them yet, but uh, there is some ground yeah, to proceed uh, because a uh, few of those topics are mentioned in this treaty. Um, then there is a tradition in Austria of uh, so-called experimental labor market policy, which we had in the 1980s. Uh, from my point of view, this is something that uh, could be rediscovered when we are facing the COVID crisis and uh, the problems on the labor market. Uh, what were the experiences? What uh, can, can we uh, gain from that for the new situation? Um, still, much more awareness for social solidarity economy uh, is needed, especially among uh, politicians, I would say. Uh, I think it, what we need is uh, regulation and framework in favor of social solidarity economy. Um, and definitely it needs much more efforts uh, in terms of incubation of social solidarity economy, helping new initiatives and enterprises to start to uh, advise, counsel them uh, professionally. Yeah, and in general, it needs much more education uh, on this topic. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. You mentioned another field where a crisis is uh, looming and developing, and that's uh, uh, housing, because uh, prices go up. And uh, since housing is a basic human right and it is uh, at risk, people are forced to move to leave places where they spend their entire life because uh, uh, the prices get too high. But there are some examples. You may have heard about the situation in Berlin where there is a question of expropriation. Well, this doesn't sound very good, but uh, there is a problem where you have uh, um, companies owning more than 3,000 uh, uh, flats and uh, they not only don't care properly for uh, this real estate uh, but uh, it is also very expensive. So we also have some initiatives in this country. Um, you can find some information in the booklets which are over there. We had a seminar uh, concerning, a workshop concerning um, cooperative housing last year. So we uh, still have uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, 15, 20 minutes for the next round of questions. Thank you. I would like to ask our Polish panelists If I understood properly, you are a social enterprise, you have your members and you have employees and you have your suppliers. And I want to ask, well, whether your employees do get some benefits something that goes 
beyond what they would get in a normal shop, normal business. And uh, another question is whether um, the but whether your workers have the possibility of joining the um, uh, the, the cooperative. Uh, you said that you are 500 members and you have 14 employees. And uh, I would like to know how do you handle or what is your relationship with the employees? Um, the employees are uh, fully 100% members of the cooperative. And some some of them are even co-founders of the cooperative. The idea is that uh, that uh, yeah we um, yes that and the be uh, uh, so um, even even the the um, the workers of the cooperatives of the cooperative also have to do the three-hour voluntary work uh, for for the cooperative. So you can sometimes uh, see them doing doing uh, another work than than they usually do. So even if they are coordinators of uh, um, of logistics, then uh, sometimes you see them uh, selling uh, selling goods at the cash register because they are doing their three hours of voluntary work. And. Uh, mm, Another thing is that uh, the uh, the benefits. I'm not sure what kind of benefits uh, uh, you refer to. Uh. No, I'm sorry. I I I was asking about those 14 employees because you spoke of the f uh, 14 employees, and they are at the same time full-fledged members, are they? So, even if you enroll more employees. If you should need more employees, would they immediately become members or? Of the cooperative, and they have to be part of. Uh, they have to take part in uh, decision making of the cooperative. They are crucial. When you when you are a worker of the cooperative, you have. Uh, uh, you, a lot of uh, super important information, inside information about the cooperative. You are part of very important processes. There is no way you could, uh, you would, there is no way you can be an outside person. You, you are automatically part of all the decision-making processes and uh, part of the uh, uh, general assemblies and so on. So the crucial aspect is before you become a, a Employee is first. You have to become a member of the cooperative, and our producers, uh, our producers, mostly are not members of uh, of the cooperative, for strictly technical reasons. They they all live outside of Warsaw, and uh, don't have time to participate in all the uh, all the online uh, processes. But they all have a discount in the cooperative, so they can also buy stuff in the cooperative uh, uh, for the same price as uh, as the members. But they don't take part in the in the in all the decision making processes and uh, and so on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, one ask for you. Uh, I'm from uh, Geopark uh, Sudetic Forland from near to Wrocław, and I want to ask you about the geographical border uh, where you are uh, taking the products from, yes? Where is the, the, the uh, ask is where there is local is end, yes? Where, how, how far you take the products from? It's actually the end of the world. <laughs> there so, you know, the, the asking is, where is local, yes? Where is local products from, yes? There is, you, you told me that, that the local is the, is the one, uh, one, one region, uh, yes? They the, the, the are uh, in one society from one region. 
And in this case, there is not local. Yes, there is our product, but not local. I have to, I have to explain a bit, uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, the idea of the co of our cooperative shops is that you can be fully uh, independent of supermarkets mm -hmm. in terms of food and also cleaning products and uh, hygiene products. So that means that uh, this is not the same as a CSA, for instance. It is compatible with, with it, but it's not the same. Like, uh, uh, you cannot, uh, for most of the time in, in Poland, you cannot live only from uh, stuff that you get from a CSA. You still have to go to a market or a shop or something to, to buy other stuff. But this cooperative, the idea for this cooperative, that is a 100% alternative to supermarkets. So you don't have to go... Yes, yes. There are other cooperatives in, in, in Poland that, uh, that uh, focus on strictly local stuff. Mm -hmm. But in the cooperative, we have a special working group that, uh, um, that uh, works out the criteria for the products. Yeah. So t sometimes the locality is crucial, especially for, uh, for all the... Yes, for, uh, for all the vegetables and, uh, and uh, cheese and, uh, and all these kind of things that are, that are available. Uh, but then there are, we have some uh, controversial products mm -hmm. from this point of view. Like we have some dried fruit from, from uh, far away. We have bananas. There was a long process, decision-making process uh, for the bananas. And uh, the result of the discussions was that people eat bananas, whether we have them in the cooperative or not. It's a, it's, it's a big community and a lot of people will buy bananas. And if we don't have them in the cooperative, they will buy the bad bananas in the supermarket. On the basis of this, we decided to have bananas in the supermarket, in, uh, in our shop, so that at least they, they can buy the... Uh, like um, uh, they are actually not only fair trade uh, organic, but they are uh, Demeter bananas. The, uh, ba uh, is the and and also also one other uh, uh, example is we have uh, we have some uh, citrus fruit and uh, avocados and uh, and uh, and some olive oil and things like this. Uh, from uh, uh, from a cooperative in uh, Sicily that we know and we have visited and uh, and we have coffee from Zapatistas that we get uh, via uh, uh, via a German collective and uh, these kind of things. But the idea is to really uh, uh, to attract as many people as possible in the conditions where people do eat bananas and drink coffee and so on and to and to offer them like uh, a bit better uh, products within the community i think uh, what you were saying is very similar to the food corps uh, in austria um, <clears throat> uh, concerning local and regional products uh, uh, there was a survey on uh, food corps uh, in Vienna uh, which showed that uh, the average distance to the producers is something like 50 kilometers. Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever uh, the importance of this number is, uh, but uh, if you look at supermarkets and they uh, say regional, then it's sometimes 200 or 300 kilometers, yeah? Um, Okay, but the thing is, uh, one aim is uh, to strengthen direct uh, um, connections with producers. It's exactly the same uh, as, as Wojtek said. Uh, there are also, uh, which, which means that uh, members of the cooperatives uh, go to visit uh, the producers, so they, and yeah, they really get to know a lot about it. Uh, so this means that great part uh, of the products is uh, from the local regional area. 
but it's the same uh, as Wojtek said. Uh, then there are also products um, from other regions. In Austria, for example, you have Alp cheese, and if you are in Vienna, yeah, it's a few hundred kilometers, and it is not always possible to have a direct connection. I know one example where the brother of the producer of the cheese in uh, uh, at, uh, close to the Swiss border, uh, uh, was studying in Vienna. He directly uh, carried uh, the cheese uh, to Vienna, and so, yeah, there was a direct um, connection. Uh, but usually there's also an organic uh, whole farmer to, to have products like that, or there are direct uh, connections uh, with, it's the same, <laughs> probably it's the same cooperative in, Sic in Sicily, I don't know. Uh, where we uh, get oranges, or yeah, it's the same we have, um, uh, or many many cooperatives in Vienna. Uh, Galine, Fe okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but uh, since the food crops are small, uh, they in Vienna, uh, they in this case when uh, they buy uh, orange and other uh, uh, fruits from Sicily. Uh, they purchase together, yeah, for all the food crops in Vienna, for example. Um, and the and the difference is uh, that the food crops um, do not want to reach full independence of the supermarket, but uh, in practice, uh, yeah, they usually have a great variety uh, of products, and so, uh, yeah, in in yeah, I think it replaces the supermarket uh, in many cases, yeah. I just want to add that uh, we work with In Campania, a cooperative from uh, from Sicily, and they also bring uh, to other cooperatives in in Warsaw and Poland. So, so when they make a transport, it's a big uh, big transport for other uh, cooperatives and entities also, not not only for us. Yeah, budu mít dvě otázky. I will have two questions for Marcus. Can you hear? The first one concerns the housing co-ops. If somebody decides uh, he or she wants to become a member to the cooperative, who then makes the decision on the way in which he or she can become a member? And the second question, it is connected to, to what institution you come from. Is the church somehow actively involved in uh, developing social entrepreneurship? Um, the, uh, the first question, uh, who is making the decision? Uh, when someone wants to become a member. Um, uh, usually, uh, uh, we're talking about groups where social life uh, and cooperation, mutual aid, all those things are very important. Uh, so usually, the ones, uh, either the ones who are developing a new house project uh, decide uh, who will be the member, or if there is an existing house project and uh, someone uh, wants to become a new member, it's also the group, um, yeah, they have a look uh, at the, usually they have a look at the person, if, yeah, if, if they have the same uh, expectations uh, towards communal life or mutual aid or, uh, or also concerning decision making if if for example this is a person who who really only wants to have uh, good quality uh, housing and living but is definitely not interested uh, in the other members uh, so the the members will say okay that will definitely be a problem in the long run because if there is no interest uh, th this will not work so it is always the group the members uh, who make the decision uh, together, and yeah, they have different ways uh, how to deal with it. And uh, yeah, concerning the second question, uh, which 
concerning the um, uh, building up a social solidarity economy. Uh, yeah, uh, there is the Catholic Social Academy, as I mentioned. Plus, uh, I know one more uh, example, uh, and I'm not sure whether it still exists in Salzburg. Uh, there was a sort of co-working space or something like that in, in, uh, in the diocese. Uh, yeah, to help uh, social businesses uh, to develop. Uh, yeah, that's what I know about it. Uh, I mean, plus, of course, there are many activities in terms of uh, uh, awareness uh, raising, uh, uh, but not so concrete in terms of incubation or something like that. Yeah, um, but uh, there are many. I don't know, uh, congresses like this, where there's place for uh, uh, giving good uh, examples, showing good cases, and inspiring uh, persons who are interested uh, to start something. Is there, there, are definitely, uh, <clears throat> there are definitely spaces like that. And yeah, on the, on the other hand, for, for example, there are initiatives uh, where church people are engaged. For example, uh, a, 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 a very good transition town initiative with various projects of social solidarity economy. Uh, and there's the possibility uh, to visit uh, and, and yeah, to transfer uh, experience and know-how. So, yeah, I don't, probably I don't have the full landscape now. Yeah, it is, I would say that there's some places uh, where this happens, yeah, but not in a big scale, on a big scale. Uh, I would have like one question for, for uh, Dobrze uh, Cooperative uh, and one question for the Housing Cooperative in Austria. And both questions uh, regard the financing aspect. Um, I would be interested in the Dobje Cooperative, um, how, for example, the you know the travelers to the local farms are financed. If it's, for example, for the sales to outside like non-members, uh, where the margin is added, or if there is there are some like outside or some additional uh, contributions of members and the other aspect would be for the housing cooperative because I'm not sure if I understood well uh, well you were uh, you were saying that the well the market property is so uh, bought out from the market and that that's this sales is uh, funded by, by some private funds so I would be interested in like how this works, if there are some just really rich people who just want to give their money out for these purposes, or, or yes, thank you. Okay, so the um, trips to the farm uh, are actually not uh, expensive at all. If uh, it's mostly self-financed by the people who want to who want to go, so they organize in cars, and there is uh, uh, there is. Uh, one member who is uh, just voluntarily uh, coordinating the trip, and people go by bicycle, by train, by car, and it's uh, and the farmer usually uh, offers some uh, uh, some food and snacks. Uh, uh, so there is actually not much uh, economy involved in uh, in that. But there are a lot of other things that uh, that we do, events and. Uh, and uh, happenings and uh, investments and so on, where that uh, that are financed uh, by the cooperative, and uh, and the uh, incomes, main incomes uh, of the cooperative are uh, are either uh, the margin from the sales and uh, uh, also uh, member fees. So there is maybe I didn't mention this earlier. This is important that uh, that we pay uh, uh, like member contributions, like as uh, association members, and this uh, accounts to uh, I think about like uh, so I think it's like six euros per month or something like that. So that's like the 
it works like a like when you're an association and you pay like a association uh, uh, member member contribution, which is very um, mm, practical for us because that's not the income from the shop. So it, this is this is the money we can uh, we can keep for longer, and we can this helps us go from one year to the other. So we don't have to get completely rid of money by the end of the year uh, uh, and start every year from zero. Like from these contributions, we can have some sort of uh, uh, yeah finance that we can that we can spend then. Okay. Uh, when you look at this uh, habitat um, construction concept, um, the thing is that uh, you need a, for, let's take one example, uh, bikes and rails, for example, a house project in Vienna. Uh, they, uh, they built the house project. I mean, other house projects, uh, it is that uh, houses are bought, that's one opportun uh, uh, variant, and in this case uh, they only had uh, the land and they were building everything, and so a certain amount of money is needed uh, for all those expenses, and let's say we are the group, we would like to uh, start uh, this house project mm -hmm. and we would like to move in, uh, then we would have a look, uh, are there any persons in here who yeah, can afford uh, to give a direct credit uh, to the house project. Um, yeah, usually there are some people who have something in their savings account and so they contribute, but usually if this is a uh, uh, not so homogeneous uh, group or a group of, for example, in Salzburg uh, where there were many punks, you know, they d didn't have any money. <laughs> uh, or uh, persons who are in a precarious condition whatsoever. Um, so there will be a certain amount of money missing to, uh, to buy uh, the land and to build the building. Um, so, and then we uh, would look outside our group uh, and we would go also go public and, and make public that there is a house project and we need, I don't know, let's take the case uh, of bikes and rails, we need 1.5 million euros. Uh, and then we uh, would ha have a campaign uh, to receive those direct credits. And yeah, usually there are smaller amounts. I mean, it is not that you can, I don't know, contribute 20 or 100 or something euros, but usually it starts with, uh, I'm not so good in crowns now, <laughs> it starts with 1,000 euros or something, and then you can say, okay, yeah, I have two or 3,000 euros uh, that I can contribute, uh, and it is most likely that I can uh, lend the money for, I don't know, three years or something, or, or longer, or only for one year. Uh, and and then you usually have uh, the opportunity to say, okay, I get a little interest from that. Uh, could be one, two percent, or also zero. Many people say, okay, I, I mean, I don't get any interest uh, at the bank savings account, uh, and I think this is uh, worthwhile uh, investing or helping this group. Um, yeah, definitely there is some some risk. Uh, this is why there is also some, usually some interest above the interest that the banks uh, pay. Uh, yeah, and then uh, all those direct credits are being uh, yeah, collected and plus, as I said, then there is funding by an alternative bank, a regular bank credit, but you usually only get uh, a bank credit if you yourself have something to contribute. And that, that's the interesting thing that they invented in, at the Mietshäuser Syndicate together with, with uh, GLS Bank. GLS Bank uh, in Germany, an alternative bank, was the first one that accepted such direct credits as it was 
the money of, of the group, yeah? Uh, and that really helped to, f to finance uh, this, yeah. That's, that's the basic uh, way uh, how this works. And, and so it is possible to have smaller amounts. Um, and just to give you an idea, uh, it really makes a difference if you move in, in, into a regular uh, cooperative uh, project. Uh, we're talking, in Vienna, we're talking about, I don't know, depends if it is a new building, we're talking about, uh, I don't know, 40 to 70,000 euros uh, per, per household. Uh, if it is an, an older uh, apartment, it is, it is less, but this, this is quite some money. So, and here, it does not depend that you, that you bring your own uh, uh, money. So, now we are slightly over time, but it's quite over time, and uh, I want to put an end uh, to this Q&A, uh, and I want to thank the interpreters. I also want to thank Etno Catherine Company, they prepared the refreshment. That's too a socially solidarious uh, enterprise giving support to migrants since many years. They are active in the Czech Republic and they cook all kinds of worldwide cuisine. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, the coffee was a fair, uh, fair trade and bio. And a telephone was found. Thank you for your participation, and uh, we will be looking forward to another meeting, be that uh, in the ecumenic uh, um, uh, alternative or any other uh, type. Thank you.